This is a 60 LED lamp, um, typical Chinese lamp, capacitive dropper, but it's not very bright because I have removed the capacitor so the only thing that's passing current through this light is the one meg ohm discharge resistor and that goes across the capacitor and that means that the light lamp is drawing 10 microamps which means it's drawing a 40th of a watt in power which is just nothing and yet look it's so bright it's, it's very good now uh, what else can I screw in there oh here's the big ugly disco lamp now I've disconnected the motor in this because it was really annoying ow and it's very bright and this thing projects beams of light all over the place. It's just an absolute mess of light. And when the lens rotates, all the beams do this. It's, it's all right, it's very good. Well worth the money. It's a, a cheap EB delight. Uh, another cheap EB delight, this is the fiber optic tree. And all it does is it lights up red. It's got, I think it's a one watt LED in it with a little uh, switch mode ballast, but it's all right. It's a nice decorative lamp. Last of the Edison screw lamps is the incredible Calex 53 LED lamp. This is amazing. Um, it's ferociously bright, as you're about to see. Ouch. Um, and it, uh, it's supposedly rated 3 watts. I'm not 100% sure about that. But it's got 53 LEDs that light up a very sort of bright pinkish light. It's very good. I like it. So out comes that fact. Uh, its little brother, the candle lamp version, is also quite bright. It's not got as many LEDs in it. And it's a small, it's got an adapter on the bottom because it's small Edison screw. And this is a Bayonet cap holder. This is a candle bridge type neon flicker flame lamp that I have modified. I've put a Bayonet cap lamp holder in the bottom, which is the type of lamp holder we use in the UK. And I've also added a 10... Oh, sorry, a 100 nanofarad capacitor inside because in the UK these lamps get very hot in the base because the resistor is used to limit the current in the actual base of the lamp and, and it tends to burn out. So by adding a 100 nanofarad capacitor, it still uh, lights plentifully bright but uh, reduces the dissipation greatly. There's also a 1 meg ohm resistor across that capacitor just to discharge it so you don't get little nip off the base. Uh, on the subject of lights, now this was an experimental lamp. I thought, well, let's make it just a little ornamental lamp and I'll make it pretty small. And it's is it about 12 LEDs I've got in here. Um, 12 LEDs um, and a little capacitive dropper. I think it's based on 100 nanofarad again. And it's just a wee scattering of LEDs. Quite nice, quite attractive. And I thought, well, what if, what if I put little Molex connectors in the end so you could plug LEDs into it and I made another one with lights around the, the side as well I'll show you this oh that's actually a wee bit ferocious you'll see a slight pattern in the camera probably because these are running on unsmoothed uh, DC output so that there tends to be a wee bit of flicker but um, it's not visible to the human eye and this you can just pull these LEDs out and change them although it's not recommended while the power's on because it's a main drive power supply and you could get a shock theoretically but you know I don't care I, you know so that's that one um, and then I thought well what else can I make and uh, I got some uh, of the LED olive lamps hacked them put a Molex connector inside you can pop these caps open and you can change the LEDs again but I found that warm white and all of them gave a really nice retro look. It looks all sort of sepia and pastel -y. It's really attractive. I should add that power consumption of all these strings, all these thick lights I've just plugged in there, is around about one watt or less. So anyway, then I got a bit greedier and I thought, oh yeah, that's, that's a bit ferocious. That's splattering light all over the walls because these are uh, lensed lights. The other ones are using the side emitting LEDs because um, uh, I just like the side emitting LEDs, they're, they're, they're visible from a wider angle. But this, I, I'm not even sure how many LEDs are in this, but again you can just change them to whatever LEDs you want. And then I got greedy, I got really greedy, and I decided to try and fit as many as I could in the smallest base possible. So I got a compact fluorescent base, salvaged from an existing lamp, and I crammed 50 uh, LEDs in series into this 
uh, again in Molex connectors, and these are a mixture of warm and cold white. Again, I can't see the flicker, but the camera is obviously not that thrilled at the sheer amount of light coming off this thing. This looks fantastic. It's a mixture of warm and cold, and you can just swap the LEDs again, again, with the power off, because the thing is kind of live if you pull the LEDs out and it exposes the pins. But then, again, if you, took, uh, if you take this out of the socket, I mean, that's live in there, so, hey, you know. Anyway, other things that light up. This is a traditional-style fibre-optic Christmas tree-type light thing, but it used to have a tungsten halogen lamp underneath it, but I modified it. I took the tungsten halogen lamp and the colour wheel out, and I put in a capacitive dropper again, and 24 LEDs, a mixture of red and yellow, so you get a, a mixture of yellow tips and orange tips and red tips. The whole thing is just a blaze. It's very bright, and it draws, again, about one watt. Lots of solar lighting. All these spheres down here, and this spiral here, each of them runs off a two-inch square solar panel and batteries. This whole window's lit up by solar power. It's kind of nice. Now this... This string of LED fairy lights actually started off as a set of tungsten fairy lights, but I modified it. I took the um, push-in type lamps out, I removed the glass filament lamps from them, and I put LEDs in instead. Uh, put them all in the correct polarity all the way around, and then made a power supply. A very small power supply, I shall show you it. I'll just uh, pop the light on so you can see it. There's a power supply here which is a bridge rectifier and four 10K resistors, one soldered to each lead, and then the whole lot potted in resin. And that means that these LEDs here are running at about three milliamps each, and the power consumption is, again, just under a watt. Yep. Uh, so that's uh, just a few of my LED things. Yep.